This final section is entitled Beyond the Basics. In this section, we'll learn how to send nicely formatted HTML emails using SwiftMailer. We'll also learn how to upload and modify images. Next, we'll learn a better way of managing database changes. Finally, we'll wrap up by learning how to translate our application into multiple languages. In this first video, Sending Emails Using SwiftMailer, we'll learn how to configure our application to send emails. You can create your own mailer component to work with emails, but it's unnecessary because Yee is already tightly integrated with the popular SwiftMail library. We'll learn to configure the mailer component, compose messages, and then send them using this built-in library. The first step to sending emails in Yee is to configure the component. Open up web.php and scroll to the mailer configuration. You'll see that a variable called useFileTransport is set to true. A transport in SwiftMailer is simply a class that defines how a message will be sent. Common transports are SMTP, SendMail, and the file transport. We'll ultimately use the file transport in this video, which simply means that the email is written to a text file when the send method is invoked. But let's quickly show you how you would use this to set up the SMTP transport, because this is probably what you would do in a production app. First, you would set use file transport equal to false. Now, create another attribute named transport and pass it an array of values. The first key is class, and its value is the fully qualified class name of the SwiftMail SMTP transport. The remaining key value pairs are all common settings used to configure an SMTP client, such as host, username, and password. We'll add them here, and then comment them out so that you have them for reference when you look back at the code samples. Finally, set use file transport back to true again. We're going to be sending an HTML email from our application each time a new user signs up. Generating content for an HTML email in Yee is the same as generating a page in your application. Emails have their own layout, and a basic layout is provided for you in mail, layouts, html.php. If you open that file up, you'll see it looks very similar to the main application layout, but without a lot of the links to external resources or widgets. While we're in here, let's take a moment to add our logo to the top of our application generated emails. First, we have to generate a link to our logo to use as the source attribute of our image tag. We'll use the URL helpers to method as usual to do this. However, this time we'll pass a second Boolean parameter with the value of true. This will cause the URL manager to generate an absolute link because the file will always be hosted on our server rather than embedded as an inline attachment. Next, simply use the HTML helper to generate the image tag. Next, we'll create the body of our message. Create a file in the mail directory called register.php. This is going to be a very basic email. We'll start with a doc block and add a var definition for our model variable. We'll eventually pass the newly created monster into this email to include a bit of dynamic data. And this just helps our IDE with code completion. Next, we'll add a quick heading and a thank you paragraph, which will include the monster's name and then a reminder of their username for their records. Now, in order to tie this all together and send the email, go ahead and open up our monster controller and head to the action create method, which you probably remember is the method that generates and processes our registration page. We'll head down to the portion of the method that executes when a monster is successfully created, and right before we redirect them to their profile page, we'll send a confirmation email. Make a call to the compose method of the email or application component. The first parameter is the name of the email view, which is register, and the second parameter is where we'll pass our newly created model into that view. It works the same as the render method in our controller actions. Next we'll use method chaining to set some of the metadata for our email, such as who it's from, who it's going to, and so on. We don't have email addresses for our monsters, so we'll just send it to test at test.com for now, but typically you would store this information with your user models and then pass it to the set to method. When we finish setting up our email, we make a final call to the send method, and voila, we're ready to try out our new feature. Apparently, Bigfoot has gotten very lonely all by himself in the woods over the years, so he wants to try his hand at romance. 
we'll head to the registration page and set them up with an account. The details aren't very important. Click the Create button, and you'll see that you're brought to the profile page as expected. Now, let's confirm that our email was sent. Click on the Debug toolbar, and using the last 10 requests drop-down, select the second call to the register action. Click on it, and then click on the Mail tab on the left. You can see that our email was successfully sent. It was written to a file, and that all of our dynamic data was injected properly into it. At the bottom of the debug data, you'll also see a link to download the actual message in email format. We'll do that quickly, and then open it with Apple Mail in order to verify that our email looks like it should. Although this was a basic example, you should now feel comfortable managing the email component of your application. In the next video, we will learn how to upload and work with images.